So I like to store, as I said, my sourdough starter in the fridge in just these little jars. And last time I used it, I just took a little scoop out. The second part of this video will actually show you how I put it back in this jar and put it in the fridge for next time. But today we're just going to scoop this out and get it in our bowl here and get it all set up so that tomorrow we'll be able to make pancakes. So here we have our sourdough starter out of our little jar. If you got a sourdough starter from a friend, it will probably just look like this. If you got it as one of those little dry packets, you are gonna have to rehydrate it and then it'll get to this point. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and get some warm, not hot water, because the sourdough starters, little microbes, can actually die if you put too hot a water on them. You want it to be warm because it will actually rise quicker and get that sourdough flavor faster. So right now it looks like I have in here, I bet it's about a quarter of a cup of starter. And for my pancake recipe, I need three cups of starter. So I will actually be adding enough water and flour to get that three cups for tomorrow. If you were just feeding this, say you had made your pancakes and this was just your starter that you were gonna be putting back in the fridge, you would not do this much. Or if your recipe only called for one cup or two cups, you wouldn't need to do as much just kind of go on what your recipe is. I don't really do recipes that call for a gram of this, a gram of that, just because I find it easier to be a little less precise and it still works out just lovely. If you're doing those fancy artisan loaves, you will need to follow those recipes and the grams and things like that. But I generally don't make those because they do just take more steps and more time that if you are using your quicker recipes, they still taste great and they don't take as much babysitting. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some water in this. And as I said, it's warm, but not hot. And to get those three cups, we'll probably start with about that much water. And I like to mix the sourdough into the water a little bit before I add the flour so that it gets a little more evenly distributed. You don't need to completely mix it in, just to get it a little dispersed throughout the water. Then I'm gonna add about, we'll start with a cup of flour. I know, Kitty, you want dinner. And right there we have about a cup. And this will rise, so you don't have to get all the way up to the three cup line. But I am gonna add some more water. Another scoop of flour. So again, I'm not quite to what my recipe needs yet, so I'm gonna put some more. And when you feed your starter, as I said before, if you're just doing a feeding, all you have to do is give it enough water and flour that the microbes you've grown can have something to sustain them and keep them going. So if you were just doing a feeding, that little fourth cup of sourdough starter that I started with, you're gonna have to double that. So that's why I always keep it low because if I'm just feeding it, say it's been three weeks and for some reason we haven't made pancakes or some bread or something like that, I will just take it out and feed it and then it still is able to stay in those jars and it would last you three more weeks. All right, so that is right there. I think I'm going to do one more round. And as you can see, I'm not super precise. I don't, like I said, I don't weigh this and weigh that. And when you're just wanting your starter to get fed or make something like pancakes, you don't have to do that. And for a lot of the recipes that I use and I'm going to be sharing, with like my bread, my sandwich bread that I do and stuff like that, you actually just need, you start with the starter 
you don't have to be as precise in those recipes. And the reason I use them is because those are recipes that I like. A little bit more foolproof of recipes that are just a little simpler. And I mean, I, I do like the sourdough artisan loaves and sometimes I will go ahead and do one of those. But for the most part, I just like to do the simple, easy ways to do it. So that is a feeding for use. And as I said, if I was not making something where I needed three cups, I would have just fed a little bit of my starter and then put it back in my jar and put it right back in the fridge. You could actually even have just taken out, here, I can even show you. So this is the jar and I have put some, this is the jar that held my sourdough starter in the fridge. I hadn't rinsed it out or anything yet. So I actually just put a little bit of water in there swirled it around and scraped the sides a bit. And I am gonna go ahead and put a little flour in here and I'll show you it in the morning and you can actually use this next time. I'll still probably end up with about a quarter of a cup because this will expand and grow a little. And all I used was what was in the jar. So say you forgot, oh, oh no, I didn't feed my starter and I just took some out to make something with use your jar even if it's a little dry if you put your water in there swirl it around warm water again warm not hot you can actually get your starter back up and running from just the leftover it's like starting from your own little pre-packaged dried package so i'll go ahead and show you guys that tomorrow and you can see that even with just those scrapings from the jar and a little bit of water and a little bit of flour this is going to be active again in the morning but we'll go ahead and we'll let both of those rise. Just covered, not airtight, just covered. I like to just put a plate over this. This I'll just put the lid loosely back on there. And um, I'll show you in the morning and it'll look just perfect. So we'll go ahead and let these sit overnight and come back and I'll show you how they rose. That's as simple as it can be. You don't need to be as exact. It's actually quite forgiving if you just kind of get to know that, hey, all it needs is a little bit of flour and water every now and then. And if you keep it in the fridge, it can last for a long time. So this will make our pancakes tomorrow. I'll just show you the scraping jar as well, just so you can see how easy it is. It's so easy. And I will also show you tomorrow how to get it ready to go back in the fridge after you've used it. So our sourdough rolls really, really well. I'm actually probably going to have enough to make some bread today as well. Um, a recipe that I'm going to share with you. And then if you look, that little guy that we just used the scrapings from the jar is perfect. So I actually will give him a feeding and, and we will put it in the fridge from this instead of from this. Just because I'll use all that for pancakes and the like. So let me show you how if, say, this was what you had in the fridge and you got it out because you hadn't used it and you needed to feed it, how would you feed this? So it's actually about this full, which is about, like I said last night, it was probably going to be a quarter of a cup. So we're just going to give it a little feeding, mix it up, and put it right in the fridge for storage. And it will last at least two weeks. I've gone three, it, but if you go three weeks, it's a little bit sad but it still works. So we'll go ahead and give a little water in here. And this time, because I'm putting it in the fridge, I don't worry about making the water warm. And again, I mix it in a little bit because I like to distribute the sourdough that's in there. What I like to do after that is just get a spoon and put a couple of scoops of flour in there. We'll start with two. I think that'll probably do us. And I actually really like using this chopstick. It's just a plastic chopstick to stir. Because, and you saw me use it for the big one last night, and I it works fine for that too.
but I really like it for these little jars because you really get to move it around and you can be really precise. I like the chopstick because it just seems to work really well. It stirs everything up really nice and it scrapes the jar really well and it is not metal. You're not really supposed to use metal um, when you mix your sourdough just because it can leave a flavor in it. Um, I've never been really too concerned about it, but I just really like this chopstick and it just happens to be plastic. Okay guys, so that is fed again and it is now about half full, so that's great because it'll have plenty of room to rise and fall down. I put my lid on and this is how I store it in the fridge, just like this. I feed it, put the lid on, put it in the fridge. It doesn't have to be any harder than that. Sourdough is really simple. And the next few videos that I put out on sourdough, I will give you um, recipes. I'm going to go ahead and show you how I do my easy sourdough loaf. And I'm also going to show you, I'm going to record it this morning and, and put it out later on, my pancakes that I used the three cups that we made last night in. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the fridge. If this video helped you out, gave you some useful tips, Please consider subscribing to our channel. We're going to put out more content every week. I'm trying to do two videos. If you could give us a like and share, that would be fantastic as well. And we will see you next time.